good morning good afternoon or uh, good evening <laughs> as the case may be now this is the first uh, phd presentation from our uh, center advanced center for atmospheric radar research pusat and p2k samson joint for research under the guidance of uh, dr p mohan and uh, his thesis this thesis has been evaluated by three external experts dr vk anandan from isro and dr s raghavan from nit trichy and professor ad sharma director r and d cbit so all the three examiners recommended for the award of phd after conducting a viva and uh, dr anandan is the subject expert for conducting the viva so on behalf of uh, all of us uh, we would like to thank dr anandan for taking his time to evaluate the thesis as well as being present for this viva oc so i, I welcome you sir for this uh, event now i welcome all the participants and also titu to make the presentation so he will be presenting for uh, i think 45 minutes maximum and after that the participants can ask the questions and uh, the subject expert will give his uh, comments so over to titu uh, good morning and i welcome all of you uh, to my open defense presentation on design development calibration uh, validation and validation of 205 megahertz wind profiler and this is the outline of, of my presentation just the introduction uh, and system description antenna array uh, the transmit receive module the phase array calib phase calibration and system health validation of wind profiler observation and application and summary and future perspective and some peculiar observations as an introduction we will see uh, the basic concept of uh, wind profiler radar and why we have chosen uh, 205 megahertz and wind profiler radars are basically vertically looking pulse doppler radar which uses the principle of back scattering of em waves or electromagnetic waves from the refractive index variation in the atmosphere the back scattered signal is modulated by the background wind in the atmosphere and by analyzing the back scattered signal it is possible to measure the speed direction uh, uh, speed and direction of the wind at each height so the basic assumption of a wind profiler radar is that the oleum illuminated by the radar is homogeneous that means the wind uh, illuminated by the radar uh, radar volume or a radar beam is same throughout so if you if you uh, in case in case of a uh, target oriented pulse doppler radar the radar pulse is transmitted towards a target and the reflected signal is received by the radar radar receiver and since the target is very hot or a very hot target you will get a very strong echo that means with a normal oscilloscope it is possible to see the reflections from a target at the same time in case of an atmospheric clear air radar uh, the the atmospheric the back scattered signal is very weak and uh, 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 it is buried deep into the noise floor of the receiver so we need a very great effort uh, of signal processing algorithms has to be implemented uh, to see uh, or to extract the informations from the back scattered signal and if you see the literature we can see that the normal uh, wind profiles around the world are centered around 50 megahertz 400 megahertz 1.2 gigahertz and 800 megahertz and if you if you see uh, or if you if you draw a line at 1.5 uh, meters Uh, we can see that it is possible to make a phased array system for wind profiling application and uh, the advantage is like uh, the cosmic noise effect is very less when compared to a 50 megahertz system and the coherent ion ionospheric echoes is very less and perceptration echoes is also very less so there is a possibility of making 205 megahertz wind profiler radar and this particular literature shows the relationship between the wavelength in x axis and the altitude in y axis and the power aperture product 
That means if, uh, if to make a 205 megahertz to cover a 25 kilometer or 22 to 25 kilometer height, we need to design a system with a power aperture product of 10 days to 8 watt meter square. And if we compare the 200 megahertz system with the existing radars, we can see that uh, the 50 megahertz MST or 50 megahertz system with a diameter of 110 meter and with a peak power of one megawatt can cover a maximum height of 30 kilometer. And with a 200 megahertz system with a diameter of uh, 27 meters, it is possible to cover a maximum height of 300 kilowatt. And at the same time, the 400 megahertz cannot cover more than 15 kilometers. So in, in, in next, we will look into the system description. And here we will see the block diagram and system specification, different modes of operation and digital signal processing. So this is a big uh, or uh, the, a complex, complex block diagram of the radar. Here we have uh, the main uh, operational components or operational parts of a radar is a coherent signal generator, uh, the power combiner divider network, the transmit receive module, antenna array, and the digital receiver. So in this block diagram, you can see the coherent signal generator is here and it, is, it generates a 205 megahertz. And this 205 megahertz is uh, transmitted or uh, 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 is sent to the TR module through the power combiner divider network. And the TR module will amplify uh, the, the input signal uh, to a level of 500 watts and connect to the antenna. And the received signal is again transmitted back to the digital receiver. So this is a specification of TR module, uh, sorry, uh, ST radar. And uh, the different modes of operation is uh, uh, Doppler beam swinging mode uh, and SAM mode, that is a space and an amateur. The Doppler In Doppler beam swinging mode, uh, this act as a monostatic system. That is the old radar, uh, the old 619 elements will be acting as a transmitter as well as a receiver. In the SAM mode, the entire 619 elements is uh, divided into four, seven clusters of uh, 49 element each. In that, the center cluster, that is the red highlighted cluster, will be transmitting, and all other, uh, all other, in the sense, the group of uh, a blue or a group of uh, orange uh, cluster will be receiving at the same time. That is a three-channel synchronous reception happens. This is basically a bi-static system. And if you see the system transmit chain, we can see a coherent signal generator will generate a minus three dBm signal. And, uh, 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 and it passed through a gain block and all this uh, power combined divider network. And at the input of the TR module, we will be seeing a minus 10 dBm signal. And this 10 dBm signal is amplified to a level of 500 watts and the output, uh, and output, to the, output is connected to the uh, antenna. And in the system receive chain, the system uh, will be seeing a signal varying from minus 50 dBm to minus 165 dBm. That is minus 50 dBm signal corresponds to the signal coming from backscattered from the near atmosphere and the minus 165 dBm corresponds to the farther atmosphere that is uh, 20 kilometer or above. So uh, after, after that, uh, the TR module will give an amplification or initial stage of amplification, amplification of uh, 42 dB and uh, uh, with the power combiner divided network, uh, uh, the digital receiver will be seeing a signal of minus 33 dBm to plus 12 dBm. And this is how the TR modules are arranged inside the radar. All 619 TR modules are hanging up from the roof and uh, this is connected, uh, connected to the antenna through a four meter cable. And this is the digital uh, signal processing block. Uh, here the, uh, the digital samples coming out from the ADC is down converted to a five megahertz band and the decoded range average and coherent indication happens inside the radar processing computer. And as an output, we will get IQ samples. These IQ samples, uh, then uh, we, we are, uh, the windowing is applied in the IQ samples and we will do a complex FFT and we will get a power spectrum. That is a Doppler spectrum is estimated. From the Doppler spectrum, we estimate the wind vectors that is U, V and W. Next, we will see the antenna array. Here we are using a three element Yagi antenna and we will see the design uh, and the simulation results and measured results and the design of antenna array. The standard design is optimized by considering uh, the parameters like a gain should be greater than 7 dBi, uh, the front to back lobe ratio should be better than minus 17 dB and the VSWR should be better than 1.2. And these are the optimized parameters. There is a dipole length, 
a, dipo, a, di, a directed lens, reflected lens, space between the uh, dipole and director, and spacing between the dipole and reflector. And here is the optimized or uh, simulation results. And from the simulation results, uh, we can see that the beam width, that is the E-plane beam width is uh, 65 degree and H-plane beam width is uh, 122 degree. And the fentro back top ratio is minus 18 dB and VSW is better than 1.2. And gain is also 7.6 dBi. And, the and next we will see the measured results. So this is the S11 measured result. And uh, we can see that it is better than minus 22 dB and the gain is also better than 7 dBi. And the measured result of radiation pattern shows that the E-plane pattern, e pattern is 62 degree and H-plane pattern is 118 degree, which is uh, uh, correlating with the simulation result. And to understand the mutual coupling, uh, we, uh, arranged, we have arranged seven elements uh, in, uh, uh, like, like in illustrated in the figure. And uh, we, we have done the S21 measurements between the antenna 192 uh, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and 1 and 7. And we see that uh, the, uh, 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 all the result is better than 20 dB, minus 20 dB. Next, we will look into the design of uh, uh, array. And the array is designed considering uh, the minimum detectable signal, the half power beam width, the inter element spacing of the system. And to to, uh, to understand the minimum detectable signal, uh, the volume reflectivity of atmosphere has to be calculated. That is, volume reflectivity is, uh, is uh, the eta r in the uh, uh, range equation. And it is, consider it is uh, uh, calculated by the expression cn square uh, into 0.38 into lambda raised to uh, minus 1 by 3. And where the cn square is the refractive index structure coefficient of the atmosphere. And for a 20 kilometer height, uh, the eta r is calculated as 3.3478 into 10 raised to the power of minus 19. And next we will calculate the power aperture product required for the system design. And uh, with, with the power, uh, the uh, minimum detectable signal of minus 155 dpm, and the power aperture product required is 1.6 into 10 raised to 8 watt meter square. And next we need to calculate the size of array. So to understand uh, or uh, to, to get an idea of uh, what is the size of an array, uh, uh, there is a relation between the half power beam width and the diameter of the aperture, circular aperture. So that is half power beam width is equal to 58.92 into lambda by L, where L is the diameter of aperture and it is approximated as 27 meters. And next is the inter element spacing. To avoid the grating lobes, the inter element spacing that is D should satisfy the equation that is D by lambda should be less than or equal to one by one plus sine theta, where theta is the maximum tilt angle from the zenith, that is 30 degree. So uh, with this equation, we can uh, approximate the inter element spacing as 0.7 lambda. And with all these parameters, uh, we have uh, simulated the entire array, that is 619 element array using a CST. Uh, and uh, the result shows that the half power beam width is uh, 3.2 degree and the first side lobe level is uh, uh, minus 17.7 dB and the gain is 35 uh, 35 dBA uh, with a front to back lobe ratio is better than uh, 70, so, sorry, 30, 30 dB and inter element spacing of 0.7 lambda. And this is the two dimensional pattern. And uh, to understand the beam broadening uh, while we uh, tilt the beam from a zenith to off zenith of 30 degree, we have done a simulation study. And the simulation shows that the beam broadening is happening uh, from 3.2 to 3.7 degree when we tilt the beam from 0 to 30 degree of zenith. And these are the actual images of uh, uh, the array installed in the rooftop. And, uh, and we, next we will go into the uh, transmit receive module. Uh, we will just check the functionalities of the module and uh, the block diagram. The basic functionality of the TR module is to give an amplification of 57 dBm, that is uh, 500 watts transmission power in the transmission path and uh, provide a gain of 40 dB in the receive side. And it also provides a phase shifter for beam, beam shifting applications, beam, shift, beam steering. And it also protects the receiver section from high power reflected from the antenna. It also monitors the forward as well as the reverse power and excess duty and pulse width of TR module. And this is a specification of TR module. And uh, this is the basic block diagram. Here, 
uh, the blocks uh, illuminated or blocks with the blue uh, uh, blue color indicates the transmit path and uh, blocks with the red color indicates the receive path the blocks with the green block, uh, green uh, color indicates the common path which is common to both transmit as well as receive path we can see a digital phase shifter this is a 6 bit phase shifter lies common to both transmit as well as receive path uh, where which is used for the beam steering next we will see the phase calibration and system health and uh, we will just look into the need for phase calibration uh, how the phase calibration is done how uh, the beam pointing accuracy is checked and uh, how how we are using uh, uh, how the transmit path is validated and the sew path and pattern validation In a, in, in a phase array system, uh, the phase calibration is very important to get a very good radiation pattern. So any error in the phase calibration or phase uh, error, which leads to a degradation in the pattern, uh, which, in, uh, which uh, will lead to the degradation in the performance of the system. So there are basically two types of uh, phase error happens. That is one is a static phase error, which occurs due to the path difference in the components like uh, uh, cable length, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the components which is placed inside the uh, there is a, a components like integrated circuits placed inside the TR module and the next uh, and next is and this can be corrected as a one time phase calibration during the installation. The next one is the dynamic phase error which occurs due to the aging of components and temperature. And this dynamic phase error uh, can be corrected only by uh, doing a periodic calibration. That is, uh, we have to do a a periodic calibration once in every year and the phase calibration is done using a current probe which is uh, uh, connected to the uh, uh, folded dipole that is a dipole of the antenna and uh, the uh, one uh, the, the uh, current probe is connected to the network analyzer port 2 and the port 1 is connected to the input of power combiner divider network and we we uh, we carefully analysis the s21 measurement for px phase calibration and s12 uh, for RX phase calibration. And once the phase calibration is done, it is assumed that uh, the beam is pointing at the right direction. That is, if you want to uh, point the beam towards north, to we are assuming that it is working fine. To check uh, whether the beam pointing accuracy is correct, uh, we are using the position of moon. So the exact location of moon can be tracked using, using uh, Orbitron software. And by, uh, by pointing our radar beam towards the moon, we will get exactly the reflection from the moon. So this is the concept. And uh, uh, the moon is, uh, play, uh, moon is somewhere around uh, 3, 3, 3 lakh 80, 85,000 kilometers from the earth. By that height, the radar uh, beam will be expanded to a uh, width of uh, 20,000 kilometers. And uh, the, uh, the moon, moon has got a diameter of approximately 3,400 uh, 3, kilometers. When the boom, moon enters into the radar beam, we will get a reflection, and when it is moves out, the reflection goes down. So in the in the spectrum, we can see that exactly at 12:36, we can see a very uh, slight reflection from the moon, and as the time progresses, we can see the reflection intensifies, and again as the time progresses, it will moves out. That means it is a clear indication of uh, the radar, which is uh, sorry, the moon is entering into the radar beam and moving out. So this is uh, uh, the beam pointing accuracy uh, con uh, consolidated uh, SNR plot. And the first one uh, shows that uh, the beam pointing uh, when the moon is at uh, uh, off zenith 2 and azimuth 0, and that this one is off zenith 4 and azimuth 290, and this one is off zenith 8 and azimuth 117, and off zenith 8 and azimuth 245. This, leave, uh, this give a confidence that the, our beam pointing accuracy is perfect. And next, the TX path validation. The system consists of a 619 numbers of transmit receive modules. So it is not practical to check each TR module in a daily basis. To, to, uh, to do a first cut check, uh, we made a setup like we placed an antenna outside the array and we configured the system to transmit one at a time. By receiving the, by analyzing the receiving received signal, we can easily assign, uh, 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 we can easily calculate or we can easily uh, predict that whether the system is uh, the system transmit chain is working or not. Likewise, the receive path validation can also be done. The the antenna placed outside the array is uh, will act as a transmitter transmitter 
and uh, the entire system is uh, configured to receive one at a time. And by analyzing the received signal, we can get an idea of uh, whether all the TR modules receive path is working or not. And we have done a uh, Virgo uh, pattern analysis. Uh, on a particular day, the Virgo was uh, going uh, moving uh, over the radar uh, through north two degree. And we have put our system into receive mode and analyzed the received pattern. And from the pattern, it is observed that the null to null uh, beam width is approximately 5.07 degree and half power beam width is approximately 3.36 degree. And next we will see uh, the validation of uh, a wind profiler. And uh, this is the first time someone is uh, trying with a new frequency of 205 megahertz. So uh, before going into the main array, we have done a pilot array test. That is, we have installed a 49 element mini wind profiler and uh, done a proof of concept. And then after that, we went to the installation of 619 element. And this is the installation of 49 element mini wind profiler. And you can see uh, the antennas are installed in the rooftop. And uh, uh, so the pattern of uh, 49 elements looks uh, uh, like a 11 degree half power beam width and uh, main, main lobe magnitude of uh, 24.5 dB uh, with a side lobe level of minus 18. And uh, the, the, uh, the uh, wind measured from the radar is uh, compared with the radius on observations. And it shows that there is a very good comparison between uh, the radio sonde observation and the uh, wind observed from the radar. And the correlation coefficient shows that for the sonal wind, it is uh, uh, 0.96 and for the monoidal component, it is uh, 0.88. And this is uh, some photographs of uh, radio sonde observation. And this is the validation of 619 element with the radio sonde. That the red, red uh, plot shows the wind extracted from uh, uh, the uh, radar and uh, uh, blue shows the uh, wind extracted from the radio sounding. And uh, this is for the uh, third April, and uh, this is the sonar component and melodonal component. Likewise, uh, the second May, we are getting a very good comparison. And uh, for the first August and uh, third September, also, we are getting a very good comparison. And uh, the scatter, scatter port is, looks like this, and the correlation coefficient uh, for the sonar component is point. 98 and for melodonal command is 0.89. And next validation is a velocity asymmetry display. So as we said earlier, the basic assumption of a wind profiler radar is uh, uh, the, the background wind or the wind, uh, uh, the atmosphere illuminated by the radar is homogeneous. So the, red, uh, the green lines shows the uh, background wind. Uh, in the same direction and the orange markings or the orange dots shows the beam direction and if we point a beam uh, towards uh, north that is it is hitting uh, exactly perpendicular to the uh, wind direction that means we will get a zero doppler that is the radial velocity will be zero and as we move on uh, to the east that is uh, we are hitting uh, the background wind in the same direction and we will get a negative maxima and uh, again uh, zero towards south and we will get a positive maxima. That means we will get a sine wave like pattern if we uh, move from zero degree to 360 degree. To confirm that, we have configured an experiment uh, with, uh, a, uh, with an interval of 10 degree. That is, uh, starting from zero to 360, we have rotated the beam uh, for every 10 degree and plotted the velocity. And this is how it looks like. And uh, this is the first figure shows uh, uh, the velocity estimate display for 7.5 kilometer. And second one is an 9.5 kilometer. Third one is 14.5 uh, kilometer. And uh, uh, the next one is, uh, the last one is of 18 kilometer. And all the plots, we can see a very clear indication of sine wave, which shows that the system is performing well. The next validation is a spectrum validation. And by looking into the spectrum itself, we can see uh, whether the system is uh, performing good. That is uh, uh, for, for the spectrum, uh, uh, the north and south should be mirror image and the east west spectrum also should be mirror image because the radar is illuminated uh, to an atmosphere or to a homogeneous atmosphere. So the wind will be constant throughout. So we, we can clearly see that uh, the, the mirror image is, uh, uh, mirror, we can see the mirror image in all the spectrum. 
Next, we will see some observations uh, from the uh, and, and its application of uh, wind profiler. Uh, first, we will see the maximum height coverage uh, of uh, SNR profile uh, for, for a full year. The next, uh, we will see the normal atmosphere. There is a no cloudy condition and uh, monsoon precipitation, thunderstorm, evolution of thunderstorm, upper atmospheric lightning, uh, field aligned irregularities, flight tracking using ST radar, meteor observation, noise survey measurements. And uh, the first one is a, a SNR plot of a full season. That is from January to December. If we look at 20 kilometer, we can see that uh, we are getting a high coverage of consistent high coverage of 20 kilometer throughout the year. And this is a special experiment to see the dynamics in the atmosphere. So this particular experiment is conducted in a clear sky condition. That is, there is no uh, cloud, cloud is there. And uh, this, this particular experiment is configured with a higher resolution, that is 45 meter high res, uh, resolution with a time resolution of 70 seconds with only zenith beam. And we can see that the, uh, and this experiment is conducted from morning 8.30 to evening 8.30. And we can clearly see that the uh, layers uh, which is observed in the morning is intact, uh, which not altered much till the evening. And we can also clearly see a wave-like activities in between layers. And uh, also in the lower atmosphere, we can see very high turbulent activity happening uh, in the afternoon, which is because of uh, the heating up of land. And this is the monsoon, typical monsoon precipitation. Uh, which happens, uh, which, which is uh, uh, took from a consecutive three years. That is, uh, first one is from 2017, uh, 2018, and 2019, which shows that the monsoon precipitation is very intact and uh, uh, unique feature. And uh, if you look closely, you can see the uh, uh, melting layer at 4.5 kilometer, and above the melting layer, we can see the fall of hydrometeors, and the melting layer occurs. Uh, the, the, the hydrometers is melt into water and fall down as rain drops. And next is the thunderstorm. This is a thunderstorm observation. And uh, uh, the, the thunder, during the thunderstorm, the atmosphere is inhomogeneous. That means uh, during a thunderstorm, it is not possible to calculate or measure the wind using a, a wind profiler radar. And if you see the east-west beam, we cannot see any kind of correlation between the uh, between the spectrum. That is, in the north-south beam also, we will not be uh, uh, we, we cannot see any kind of uh, uh, correlation. That means it is not possible to see any or not possible possible to calculate the wind vectors during a thunderstorm event. And to see the evolution of thunderstorm, we have configured a, a, a special experiment with only zenith beam. Uh, with a, a height resolution of uh, 45 meters and a time resolution of 17 seconds so that we can clearly see the updraft and downdraft. In the first spectrum, we can see there is not much activity in the uh, ground or uh, in the lower atmosphere. And the second spectrum, we can see that the lower atmosphere is very much turbulent. And we can, uh, since this is a zenith beam, the right side of the, uh, right, right side of the spectrum corresponds to a downdraft and left side is an updraft. You can see a very big updraft here. And in the third spectrum, you can see both the updraft and downdraft. And the post spectrum, you can see the, the precipitation starting. And this will continue till the uh, monsoon, uh, the thunderstorm ends. And this particular thunderstorm has uh, gone up to a height of 13 kilometer into the atmosphere. And, uh, and uh, the, the Doppler wind or the Doppler width also, uh, also uh, extended from minus 30 hertz to plus 30 hertz. And this is the SNR plot. By seeing the SNR plot, we can see that uh, in the lower atmosphere, uh, during a thunderstorm, it is a very turbulent kind of activity. And the overshoot of uh, uh, thunderstorm has gone up to a level of 13 kilometer. And next is the upper atmospheric lightning observations. Like the lightning we see from uh, uh, the cloud to the ground, uh, there are some kind of lightning happens or discharge happens from the cloud top to the uh, upper atmosphere. They are called as blue jet, and there is some kind of lightning happening at the higher atmosphere that is somewhere around 80 to 90 kilometers, and they are called as sprite. We have configured an experiment to check whether it is possible to detect any kind of electrical discharge uh, from the cloud top into the upper atmosphere. And these are the results. And the result shows that this particular experiment is configured with a, a window size of minus 300 to plus 300 hertz, and uh, with a start height of 9 kilometers to 110 
kilometer and this particular window is uh, shown up to 45 kilometer and and in this particular window or in a particular spectrum we cannot see any activities just above uh, the cloud top that is a, this this is uh, actually the reflections from the lower atmosphere and in the next spectrum you can see uh, some kind of discharge or some kind of electrical activity happening just above the thunderstorm and this is extending up to 24 kilometers and this is only for a, a two second Two second means this two second is the minimum possible time resolution with HD radar. So in that particular spectrum, we have observed this kind of activity. Maybe it is a millisecond, but we are getting it as a two second. And the third spectrum, you can see the electric discharge is extending up to a height of 36 kilometers. And we have no confirmed or uh, we have no confirmed that whether this is a blue jet or any kind of uh, um, uh, lightning discharge. But uh, a lot of research has to be done to, to confirm that uh, this is uh, something, some kind of uh, physics happening just above uh, the thunderstorm. And this is the SNR plot of the full uh, observation of uh, this particular event. And this is a nine, uh, starting from nine kilometers to 115 kilometer. And uh, you can see uh, the little spikes here. These little spikes are electrical discharge uh, happening above the cloud into the atmosphere. At the same time, we have seen some kind of ionosphere disturbance in the higher atmosphere, somewhere around 95 kilometers. But we have no confirmed proof that this uh, electrical discharge at the, the ground level is triggering some kind of ionospheric activities. Anyway, a lot of research has to be done. And next is the field aligned irregularity observations, that is, ionospheric observations. To do the field aligned irregularities, we point our beam exactly perpendicular to the magnetic, uh, uh, magnetic field of atmosphere. That is, uh, it is towards north 10 to 8 degree. And on a particular day, we have seen uh, ionospheric disturbance starting from uh, uh, 12 p.m. And this ionospheric disturbance has uh, extended to till evening, that is 6.30 in the evening. And as a curiosity, we have configured uh, experiment to see whether it is possible to track flight using ST radar. And uh, uh, as we know that uh, the ST radar is placed very near to uh, 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 the Cochin International Airport, which is the aerial distance of somewhere around 10 kilometers, uh, there is a lot of flight activity happens here. And this is the result. And we can see that uh, at, at, at a height of 13.5 kilometer, we can see a, a, a hot target approaching the radar. That means it's coming towards the radar that is it, it is getting a positive doppler and it is coming towards and after sometimes it is moving away with a negative doppler this shows that it is possible to do some kind of uh, research activity if uh, people are interested uh, to do some uh, flight tracking uh, research and all and this is a typical meteor observation caught uh, by we were uh, we, uh, when we were looking uh, into the ionospheric activity uh, we have caught one meteor observation. And uh, the thing is like uh, the first, uh, if you see the time time snap, it is a 19, that is the 1942 15th second. Nothing is there other than some small ionospheric activity. And suddenly in the very next spectrum, that is after two seconds, that is the 17th second, you can see a sudden uh, abnormality at a 95, 96 kilometer. And in the very next spectrum, that is the 19, uh, 19th second, you can see an ionospheric activity happens. So this is basically, or this is a typical meteor observation. And we have done a noise measurement. Uh, as we know that uh, uh, the radar is a noise generating equipment uh, to understand or to, uh, to understand what kind of, uh, how much noise we are generating. We have done a simulation, uh, we have done a measurement, a spectrum measurement of uh, uh, a radar signal, a radar a signal and uh, a nearby TV broadcasting station. That uh, TV broadcast, broadcasting station is uh, broadcasting uh, from 210 hertz, uh, 210, 210 megahertz to uh, uh, to have uh, to, uh, to, to a frequency of uh, 250 megahertz. Uh, so uh, the result shows that uh, very very near to the radar. Uh, the signal is very less. That is, the radar signal is uh, somewhere around uh, minus 20 dB, and uh, all this, uh, all this uh, TV channel we can see as uh, uh, as uh, blue indicators. As we move away from the radar, we can see that the radar signal goes to uh, the noise floor, and uh, uh, 
the radar, uh, the TV signal picks up. And very near to the uh, TV station, we can see the signals goes to a level of zero dBm, and uh, the radar signal is almost in the noise follow. And this is a graphical representation uh, for the uh, spectrum observation, and you can see uh, that as we move away from the radar, uh, the uh, the spectrum or uh, the the magnitude moves down, and uh, as we move closer to the uh, TV broadcasting station, uh, it is uh, shown that uh, the signal uh, gains the energy. And next, we will look into the summary and uh, future perspective and some peculiar observations observed from SGRADA. As a summary, I can say that we have developed a wind profiler system with an un unconventional frequency of 205 megahertz uh, using a Yagiuda, three element Yagiuda array. And we have also simulated uh, and measured uh, the, uh, the result of uh, uh, the Yagiuda antenna. And uh, the system is integrated and uh, the phase calibration is done uh, with, uh, uh, in a TX path and RX path. And system validation is done by comparison with radius only. And the height coverage, uh, we are getting continuously from 315 meters to 20 kilometers with the excellent system uh, stability. And as a future perspective, we can uh, we can easily convert this uh, existing system to an 91 channel atmospheric imaging radar. That is, uh, we are using we are using a network of power commander divider. And in the last stage of net uh, power commander divider network, we are using a one is to eight splitter. Out of this one is to eight splitter, we are using only one, seven numbers of uh, uh, port, and one port is free. And if you see uh, uh, the, the power coming at, or the leaked power coming at this point, you can see it comes around minus 123 dBm to minus 8.5 8, 8 dBm. That means if we connect or if we develop a 91 channel receiver and connect uh, 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 each channel to this, uh, this power combiner divider, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, will, we can easily convert the existing system into an atmospheric imaging system without much uh, com uh, complexity. And uh, next is the automated phase calibration. Now the phase calibration process is a tedious uh, job uh, for RX path and a, a TX path, which requires a two person uh, with the three continuous shift uh, for 20 to 30 days to complete uh, the whole array, for whole array of 619 element. And this has to be performed once in every year. So in order to uh, reduce the shut, uh, shutdown time, uh, downtime of the system and uh, to reduce the ma manual errors, we need to develop an automated phase calibration system to calibrate, phase calibrate the system. And second is the signal development of signal processing algorithm. And the, with the existing algorithm, there is a fallback uh, that uh, during the precipitation time, uh, the, uh, it is difficult by the existing system or existing algorithm to distinguish between the closely spaced background wind and uh, the precipitation uh, and the hydrometer fault. So there is a scope of development of new sophisticated algorithm to distinguish uh, the background wind from the hydrometer's fault, and uh, uh, so that we can we can exactly predict or exactly calculate the wind vectors during a precipitation. And next is an all sky imager. Uh, uh, so right now we can see only an observable area of zero to thirty degree of zenith. And we need to develop a system which can go up to a uh, uh, offset of 90 degree. And these are some peculiar observations we have uh, found uh, during the Doppler uh, uh, found from the SGLADA. And this is actually a typical monsoon precipitation. And if you see at the melting layer, we can see a Doppler band, which is extending from minus 23 to plus 23. And the edges of this Doppler band is not visible. And to, to, to know more, we have uh, um, uh, scheduled or uh, uh, configured an experiment with a higher uh, Doppler width, that is uh, 47 to uh, minus 47. And e e again, that we are not able to capture the edges of this particular band. And again, we increased the uh, Doppler size, uh, Doppler width to uh, minus uh, 94 deep uh, heads to plus 94. And here we can clearly see the edges of the Doppler band. And that means from, from analyzing the spectrum, we can see that some kind of physics or some kind of physical uh, dynamics or uh, dynamics is happening at the time of uh, transition from uh, uh, a uh, hydrometers to 
water that is the melting layer some kind of physics is happening and i cannot find a theoretical background or theoretical explanation for this kind of activity so a lot of research has to be done to understand the exact physics that is uh, uh, creating this kind of doppler uh, doppler shift or doppler band and next is uh, a very peculiar uh, rain observed from a height of 17 kilometers that is uh, this is a particular experiment conducted with a senet beam uh, 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 senet beam with a with a range resolution of 45 meters and a, a time resolution of uh, 17 seconds and uh, it, during the day we can say that this is somewhere around 12:45 uh, in the uh, 12:45 pm and uh, uh, if you see at the height of 17 km you cannot see some uh, you cannot see any uh, uh, good amount of signal uh, strength at this particular height as the time progress we can see that uh, the signal is picking up that is some kind of activity started at this point and even uh, after the some time you can see a very high turbulent atmosphere is created at 17 km Uh, and we can see the doppler width is somewhere around minus 8 to plus 8 that itself shows that it is a very high turbulent uh, atmosphere at 17 km and even uh, again if we if we see uh, or if you see the time progress as time progress uh, it suddenly precipitate from a height of 13 km and that means it is falling directly from 13 km to the ground and if we look into the fall velocity Uh, it the fall velocity comes somewhere around uh 5 meter to 5 to 6 meter per second that means we can we can say that these are no any uh hydrometers because hydrometers cannot fall at a, at this this kind of speed so this is much different uh activity happening at there it could be uh, some kind of ice crystals but how it is trapped at 17 kilometers and if you see again uh, these crystals or this kind of uh, uh, downfall uh, mm -hmm. we can see till at the 4.5 somewhere around 4 to 4.5 km that is a melting layer and we can again see some kind of melting or some kind of uh, dynamics happening at that point that means uh, it, it these are these are no water and at this point it is melt into water and fall down as rain so this is a, a peculiar observation or peculiar uh, rain we have got using a, a, a radar and we have not seen any uh, any any theory or uh, any any literature uh, suggesting or uh, mentioning this kind of activities and this is the snr plot and from the snr plot it is clear that during the whole day time the atmo I know, uh, atmosphere is very calm and by the time of uh, somewhere around 4 pm in the evening you can see a very heavy mass which is transferred from 7 km 17 km to the ground level or the to the lower atmosphere so with this uh, i am concluding my presentation and uh, i am commenting like uh, uh, i i can i can uh, any anyone who is uh, interested in doing research uh, in these observations uh, you are welcome and all the data is available with the st radar and uh, we we have to we have to or concentrate more on um, this kind of uh, uh, unusual activities observed from the radar to understand uh, the secrets of uh, mother nature and uh, thank you